Gibbs with us now. Joe Gibbs, uh, Football Life, premieres Friday, 9 o'clock. They do a great job with these on the NFL Network. The one-hour show features interviews with Joe Gibbs and uh, Theismann, Riggins, Daryl Green, many of the Redskins, <clears throat> and the legendary coach joins us now. Coach Mike Francesa on WFAN in New York. Welcome. How are you? Mike, how you doing, man? It's, Good. It's a pleasure for me to be with you. Nah, nice to talk to you again, Coach. How's everything? How's, uh, how's life? How's things going? Good. Well, we just got a lot going on. We had a heartbreak in racing uh, two days ago, finished second. But, hey, that's part of life in pro sports. Uh, everything else, you know, we're going as hard as we can with it. And I know you guys are got a lot going on in New York. Yeah, we and, do. Uh, uh, we're struggling through a tough season. But, you know, you've had a remarkable second career in auto racing. You've really found something that uh, to compete in that you love uh, as much as you love football, right? Yeah, and I got I got both my boys, uh, and my grandkids are now coming into racing. They're all around the racing thing and interning here and all that. So it's fun family wise, and it's I got to tell you, it's a lot like football, and so it's it's it's, it's super competitive. And uh, in football, you got to have a quarterback. Over here, you got to have a driver. In football, you got to have a coach. And over here, you got to have crew chief. So it's the same thing. It's just that we got a car thrown in there. You know, as you look back, and they're going to do this uh, look at your life with a football life and uh, very much uh, deserved. You know, you talked about a quarterback. You won three different Super Bowls with three different quarterbacks. Highly unusual for that to be the case. I mean, that, and that's something that jumps out right away, your ability to win with different guys. Well, I, I think I tell people, too, when they say that, I say I had three great ones as far as I'm concerned. Mm. You got Seisman, you got Doug Williams, and you, you got Rippon. Uh, I got to tell you, those guys are, are – I was fortunate enough to have them, I'll tell you that. And – the other thing, when they when you get something like this, where they do a story on your life, I mean, I, I, my life is all about the people I was fortunate enough to be around. And in football, I had two great owners that would do anything to give me everything that I needed. And with Dan and and uh, Mr. Cook, and I think it's the players I had. It was I was surrounded with great coaching staff, and then our fan base in Washington. I know New York. I go up there and. I've been called every name you can think of in New York, but that's that's part of life. That's part of life. I understand that. Uh, but the fan base in Washington was just fantastic. And I loved the fact I was in the NFC East. That's the biggest and best. And the it was great. And it was great. It, it when was you guys great. were in it uh, with Coach Parcells, yourself, Buddy Ryan, it was great. It really was. It was, it was a wonderful time, and you guys all were able to you know, have tremendous teams. And, you know, I, I always bring you up, Coach, because uh, you struggled that first year. You really did. Uh, you struggled those first eight or nine <laughs> games. And you know what? You, the, your owner showed a little patience because I know you turned it around the second half of your first year. You might have won your last seven or your last six, whatever it was. But you really struggled right out of the box. Yeah, I, it, I tell you, 0-5 in Washington, when I started off, I was looking for a different way home at night. <laughs> <laughs> How tough was that first year when you go back and look at it? I got to tell you, you don't get anything much tougher than that because I thought I was going to be the first guy to get fired and never win a game. <laughs> luckily, luckily, so, they, luckily, they were patient with what was yeah. coming. But, you know, you think about it. These coaches now, they don't get a lot of time. I mean, teams aren't very yeah. patient anymore. Now, they weren't always patient, but they were a little more patient than they are now. No, and the players used to come in to me and complain. They said, hey, our career is only four and a half years long. And I used to tell them, I said, hey, Look up the head coach. Head coach in this league, the average lifespan is two and a half. So get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, what, what you built, when you think about your teams, you, you know, there are so many parts to your team, the running game, your offensive line and how good they were, and also your receivers. You know, you had your posse. You had your great offensive line. You had your tremendous running backs. I mean, your offenses were so powerful in so many ways, and there was such, you know, they were, they were labeled, and there was a, you know, really a renowned respect for every part of your offense. Well, it, the offensive part of it was we did have so many great players and great coaches over there. And the thing I say to people, too, because it gets – focused on me because I was on offense a lot, but our defense led us to Super Bowls, and our special teams were truly special. And if you take Coach Parcells 
and we went against the Giants, he recognized that. Yes. They play great defense. He always they play, told me. They, they play great offense, and they play great special teams. And you don't talk about somebody I got respect for. It's the Giants and Bill Parcells. Well, yeah, you, you guys had some great games, and I know he, he might have won a couple more than you, but, I mean, you guys had great runs. But he always said keep the foot in football. I mean, that was always what he said. So you guys paid a lot of respect for special teams. Yes, we did. And we started ever meeting with the Redskins on special teams. And I sat in all the meetings on special teams because I knew how important it was. And I've always said that special teams is your heart of your football team. In other words, those are the guys that don't get a lot of attention, but they're sprinting 50 yards to cover a kickoff or they're busting the wedge in some way or they're in the wedge. I mean, those are guys that really pay a price. And they wind up being some of the most emotional leaders on your football team because the other players respect them so much. Coach, I remember, uh, you know, so much about your teams and they were, you know, just great teams. We're talking with Joe Gibbs, the legendary coach. Um, what, what I remember uh, that stands out to me is obviously the three quarterbacks, but also you wanted both strike years. There was a lot of tumultuous stuff going on, but your team was stable, knew how to, de- how to design, and you took the advantage of those two years and won championships. Yeah, well, I think you got to say, too, I had a great general manager there in Bobby Bethard and Charlie Cashley, both of them. They went out and hunted for players in the, that one strike here we have where we actually play games. Right. Uh, you know, a lot of the tribute goes to those guys, but yeah, it, it was tumultuous. Everybody talks about the NFL, and the one thing I can tell you about the NFL, it changes at roughly 30% a year. That's what I always felt. It's strategy on the field. It's, you know, going to caps. It's the draft. It's it's constantly changing, and the rules can constantly changing. So I think if you're in pro sports, we have the same thing in NASCAR. It's going to be a world that's going to be fast-changing, and you better keep track of it or you're going to be falling behind. We're talking with Joe Gibbs. They're going to do a football life on him this Friday night at 9. Check it out over this uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, Well-deserving of the three-time uh, Super Bowl winning coach, the legendary coach of the Redskins. You know, you were an offensive coach, as, you, as, we, as we mentioned. Uh, how, what, did you, what did you expect? Out of, what was your relationship like, and what did you expect out of your quarterbacks? Well, I think um, you're, uh, I felt like our quarterbacks, we had a – the strategy for us, basically, a lot of people and a lot of your players complain if you run the ball a lot. But the one thing that you want to do with the run game, and I think our quarterbacks understood that, it was you want to get them out of too deep. In other words, you want to be able to get them to put people in the box. Yep. Because then we had great receivers, and they're one-on-one. And so it was a simple philosophy there. I think the other thing with our quarterbacks, we believed in in those days, we didn't want them hit. It's a little different today. They open up both sides. Uh, they got lots of times it's four receiver set and that right. type of thing. Our philosophy is a little different in that you don't want that guy hit. Yep. And so our structure was a little different. And um, a lot so of max protection, right? A lot yeah, of max protection. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the key to that is you can't maximum protect because then you're running three man routes against right. zone and stuff. What we had a scheme that was kind of unusual. We spent a lot of time with it. You wanted to be able to block eight, but if they're not coming, we're going to check our way out. And so we were trying to get the best of both worlds. That's what you're basically trying to do. But we didn't want the defense to ever say. We can get after these guys and make them throw a break off. Because if you happen to be motion and wind up with the ability to block eight and they come, now you got a chance for a home run. So anyway, it's just philosophically it's a little different. Today they spread everybody out and they take some risk. That really wasn't our game. Yeah, well, it worked very well. Your offenses were incredibly proficient year after year. And I, I think about your Super Bowls, especially the Denver game, you get down 10 nothing and go through that 35-point explosion, I mean, which was unbelievable. And then the team you took up to Minnesota that game, I thought that team, when they hit the, the Super Bowl against the Bills, was just an unbeatable team. That team was playing brilliantly at that point. Yeah, we had uh, the crazy thing about that team. We went 0-4 in preseason, but we had veteran guys. And, you know, I wasn't particularly over-concerned about it. But uh, Mr. Cook 
<laughs> Mr. <laughs> Cook was. He called me out. We had a meeting, but those guys responded, and we ran off 11 in a row. That was a very good football team. We got to, When we got to Minnesota, everything kind of went our way against Buffalo, you know, just, you know. You were a great team. That was a great so, team, though. It really yeah, was. Yeah. That, that was a powerful, very powerful team in every way. Yeah. What player? I mean, you had so many great players we could list, but what player did you have an unusual relationship with or an affinity with? Was there one player that kind of sticks out over your time there? Uh, I, I don't. I, th- I think we had so many great players, and so many of them I have, you know, have really good relationships with. Uh, we're going to be. Um, there's going to be. Um, uh, a sad thing. It's going to be the tenth year since Sean Taylor passed away. Right. And Sean was very unusual when he came in. I would say, uh, if you want unusual, it would probably be Sean when he first got there. Very much an individualist. Did not want to talk to the coaches. Was pretty much aloof and standoff. And yet, over the period of those first couple of years, had a baby. Spent a lot of time with our chaplain there with the Redskins, and next thing you know, he kind of turned his life around. And I think from a face standpoint, and the bottom line is he became, you know, he walked down the hall and go, hey, coach, how you doing? So it was very <laughs> unusual for him, and then you you lost one of the greatest players to ever play in the NFL, I think. And so that was an unusual relationship, and gosh. How about, how about, our, how about our coach here in town in the Jets? How about Todd Bowles? Todd Bowles, love Todd Bowles. Quiet, a heck of a player, and um, you just kind of figured that he was going to be a, you know, you kind of watched his assistant coaching career, very impressive, and I'd say you guys are pretty impressed with him there, too, with the Jets. I know they've had some struggles from time to time, but I, I like Todd Bowles so much. He's a good example of what I was talking about, somebody that's, was a quiet leader that got things done on the field. And for football players, the leadership comes from people that can get it done. That's that's who players, you don't have to be a talker, you don't have to be, you just got to get it done. I think Todd Bowles did that, and I think he was one of our leaders. Yeah, absolutely, and a very good player. As we talked to Joe Gibbs about his uh, football life, and he's very modest about all of the accomplishments, but his Redskins year in and year out, incredibly consistent team, Coach, during that whole time. You know, there was a great division. It were, there were great teams. You talked about your rivalry with the Giants. You're obviously, what the Eagles, you know, everybody, really those teams. You know, the Cowboys were up and down during that time, but what a great division it was. Year in and year out, what a great division it was. It really was, and it's almost like, at different times, people would kind of have it. We had a tough time with the Giants. Parcells yep. always seemed to be able to do a good job against us. We seemed to have a uh, uh, a lot of success against Philly. Yep, and he had and a lot yet, of trouble Philly, with the Eagles. And, yeah. and Philly seemed to have a lot of success against the Giants. They did. Gave the did. Giants fits. Gave the Giants fits. Yeah, Absolutely. and then every now and then, every now and then Dallas would jump in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I kept saying the whole time I was in that division, Hey, man, I hope they get some bad owners, bad coaches in this league. <laughs> but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. How close do you stay to football these days? Do you pay a lot of attention to it? I know you're busy I, with, your, with your racing, but do you spend a lot of time around it or no? Yeah, I love it. I'm, I'm coaching my grandkids some, so I, I do from that standpoint. I love that. But it's hard with the racing because we're gone on the weekends and everything. But I, I, every chance I get, I'm obviously watching. And, you know, I'll be watching on Thursday. So we're going to get the Giants and the Redskins. I'll be watching that for sure. Well, this is a lean giant year, Coach. You know, this is a tough year just to, you know, for the Giants. It's a very unusual year, one of those tough years, just getting their second win last Sunday. So it's been a very, very tough year this year. Yeah, I, I know it has. I kind of follow all that. and uh, But I, I think I got such great respect for you. I think this will be a war on Thursday. No question. <laughs> and, you know, when you see this kind of documentary, will you, will you, will you sit down and watch this? You know, will you, will you t- sneak a peek or would you go out of your way to watch this when they put it on this week? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to watch it for sure. And I've already seen it. They oh, you have? Okay. Yeah, and so I, I think it's, you know, 
the, the kind of embarrassing thing it's about your life because right. you know so many people got you there and it's not about them so I felt kind of bad about that but I, I do think they kind of capture some things on there about family and stuff that I think would be interesting for people to see and what do you if you if you could say one thing and I know you've always been a very modest man but if there's one thing you're proudest of with your great NFL career what is it Gosh, I think it's the relationships uh, with the players. I'll give you an example. Uh, four years ago, I invited um, from that first 11 years all the players to come back, come back here to Charlotte to the race team, and we would spend two days together, and 91 of those players came back. Wow, 91. And, and we told all kinds of stories and stuff. And I, It's relationships, uh, great relationships I had with uh, our owners, uh, both Mr. Cook and now Dan. Dan did everything he could to help me win. And, you know, Bobby Bethard and Charlie Cassidy, the staff, and the, our coaches. I talked about, you know, how important it was for us to play defense and special teams. And then the fan base, you know. So you take all that, you have to put all that together in the NFL to win. So I was really fortunate to have those people surround me. Well, we're looking forward to it this week. Thanks for giving us a couple of minutes. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Coach. Thanks you got very it, much. Mike. You Thank got you. it, Mike. All Thank right, you. man. Thanks. Take care. Hey, hey, yes, all, sir. Those, all those fans up there that call me all those names, <laughs> I, I, I say I forgive you. That's it. Thank you, Coach. Right. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Joe Gibbs and the uh, program of Football Life this Friday. It's funny. You know, he kids about that. He's exactly right. During that stretch, the Giants and Parcells beat him 9 out of 10. Now, he didn't lose a lot of games. They beat him 9 out of 10, and he whipped the Eagles and Buddy Ryan, and Buddy and those Eagles with Reggie White and Randall Cunningham and those guys always gave the Giants fits, but the Giants owned the Redskins, absolutely owned them. I mean, they did for – and to beat a team that won as much as they did, and when you realize, you know – Parcells during that time wins two Super Bowls. Gibbs wins three Super Bowls. I mean, they just, you know, they just kept winning and winning. And, I mean, they were a great team. Plus, they had a great offensive line. They had the tremendous receivers led by Monk. They had the, the deep back with Green. They had, you know, running backs like Riggins. I mean, they just uh, wonderful talent. And then three quarterbacks that, that he won with. So, they, they had, he went 3-1 and one in the Super Bowl. And the one loss was that game, the Jack Squirek game, when they lost to the Raiders, 38 to 9. But they won 42 to 10 against Denver when they were down 10 nothing. Remember, 35 points in the one quarter. Timmy Smith gets 205 yards rushing. Up in Minnesota, I think the final score of that game was 37 24, but it was not even that close. Buffalo got some points late to make that game look competitive. That game was a romp. And then they beat the uh, Dolphins when Riggins made the great run. So I don't remember the Dolphins score off the top of my head. You have to give me the Dolphins score. It was close. 27-17, is that what it was? Yeah, so that was the Reagan's play broke that game open. I think that was the chip play. I think that was 71 chip, that, that play where he broke the play up with Riggins. Uh, that was the big one in that one. So uh, he went 3-1 and one in the Super Bowl and had just a great run. So a football life for the legendary Joe Gibbs back after this.